Hey Chris, you got a second? Not really. You died. Lol, you died. Lol, lol. What's your question? Uh, it was about the new map engine, Maps 2.0 and Orion, but I can come back. Oh no, I have time for that. I have like uh, 15 minutes. That works. See. Cool. Uh, you mind if I stream this? And a few more subscribers. That'll work. Yeah, I mean, these were basically just follow-up questions to the live episode. So okay. this was, how do you create a map from scratch? Got it. How do you put maps onto a view? Okay. How do you build uh, a knock view, sort of maps and maps, nested status, a lot okay. of candy? And then the last one was, what do you do when you put objects on a map and they don't automatically connect? Oh, we can do that with uh, dependencies. That's easy. All right, cool. Oh, look, you just got another subscriber. Sweet. Okay, so let me log into that lab environment. You have all the lab environments. I have a lot of labs. Okay, uh, so what was that first question? So that first question was, you've never created a 2.0 map before, where do you start? Okay, so most people are familiar with accessing maps through one of the no details or interface details pages. Mm -hmm. So let's start there. Um, on those no details pages, you always have a maps subview on the left-hand side. And by the way, have you seen this function before? I have a feeling you're about to show me a keyboard shortcut. Yeah, so if you hold down Alt and then mouse over one of these entities, you get a couple options. We can remove the thing from the screen. We can open Performance Analyzer with the default set of metrics. We can drill into the No Details page or Interface Details, whatever Details page that is. And my favorite is Merge This Entity's Map. Basically, everything is directly connected pops onto the map. So we can do that on this node, for instance. And we'll see here a brand new thing that found connected in lab VRF1. Mm -hmm. So it's found that those two devices are connected via network connection. So we have these little pills that pop up with the traffic uh, um, bandwidth and utilization. And uh, the thickness yeah. is based on the amount of traffic and then yeah. color coded whether it's in an alert state or not. Yeah. So you asked how you create a new map. This is how you would enter from, um, from this one. Now you could save it here or you could jump over to the map editor. In the map editor, editor, we had that inspector panel on mm -hmm. the right-hand side to look at more details about whatever you're clicking on. In the map editor, much like Network Atlas or PerfStack, um, we've just got all of the entities on the left so you can start dragging stuff on. Now that also applies for availability groups. So that's the the uh, groups of groups where you have a map yeah. that is a lot of subgroups. So how do we do that? So my dashboard and then home and then Orion Maps. Now this is gonna list all of your existing maps in the top left you can create a brand new map. Okay. What about if you want to do maps of maps, where you basically are representing a set of statuses that are a roll-up of statuses of a bunch of objects? Oh, I see. So you do that with groups. Groups are the uh, effective way to group things together and group groups. Okay. Um, so you go through home and then groups. We can take a look at, for example, uh, any of these groups. And if we go into the subview, sort of that maps, that map subview always follows you around, so mm -hmm. you always have the visual or re relationship representation of that entity. Now, for a group, we pull on all of those things automatically. If you have groups in this group, those will also show up. So we've got one of those, I think, on our summary screen. Let me pop over there. And specifically, we've got a couple of map subviews here. I'll jump into this virtual infrastructure. So particularly when you're trying to summarize all of your infrastructure, groups are a great way to do that. So this map contains uh, five different groups, and you can drill into them and then look at their map subview, for instance. Got it. So that view before, um, we've seen uh, MVPs and some other people in the Slack community actually build sort of custom representation of a set of status buttons across the top. In yeah. this case, you're just doing it with a map, and you've added that map into the view. Yeah, that's right. And there were some limitations before with how we calculated status. It's mm. now much more performant. Um, the way we do it. So you don't have to worry about having too many deeply nested maps, or maybe if you have enough views, yeah. it's going to take a long time. To yeah, work. that's all solved. All right, so I guess the next thing would be you've created a map. Mm -hmm. How do you put a map on a view? Yeah. So you jump over here to Settings, and then you jump All Settings. Mm -hmm. And like any other view, um, you can scroll down here and select Add View. Add a new view. Now, we'll just create a summary view here, and I'll name it uh, knock view 2. Knock view et. Not view I like at. that. That's a great one. <laughs> we'll just name that knock view 2 and click Submit here. Now, once I'm on the screen, we'll need to go and add uh, a couple of things. First, enable the left-hand navigation. Right. So that's so, going to be the little orange dots in knock view. Each one of those yeah. dots represents one of those tabs. Separate pages. That's right. Mm -hmm. So maybe we have a tab that's specific to my network. I like putting that one next. 
put that on the tab here. We'll add a new tab uh, specific to my applications, also important. They call them apps now. Let's, let's call them apps. It's the new coolness. OK, so we've got that set up. We need to enable knock view. This is going to be going every, uh, let's call it uh, five seconds here. We're, That'll we're, be really, busy. we're really agile. All right. Once I've got that done, I'll navigate over to that view. So I found my knock view 2. We'll start with the network because that's the most important thing in technology. We'll edit that. So here we need to add the individual maps. So maybe I'll add a couple of resources here. Maybe we'll add a couple of those. And we'll say done and go to knock. Now here I've got all my knock views showing up. I see I'm on the first screen, right? Mm -hmm. But I need to edit and select um, the things. So the first one was overall, right? The summary. Right. So maybe we'll add the critical business services to that one. On the second screen, which was about my network, maybe I'll add uh, critical infrastructure. And then on the third one, um, the third one, I don't have a map. You didn't create one. That's yeah. Fine. So I've got those two. Uh, and that's it. They'll pop up and show up there. That's really cool. So they're going to cycle through. The orange dot's going to tell us which one we're on. And that little setting at the bottom of uh, how many seconds to rotate, that's yeah. going to determine how many you're on. So uh, we definitely recommend that they don't log in as an admin in the knock view on the yeah. main screens, right? So create a guest account. And then uh, a lot of times, just use Windows authentication for that box that you're displaying that off of. And then it'll automatically uh, come, like set that as your default home page in the browser, and the browser full screen. Bring up the box, and your, your view will start uh, rotating through. Yep. All right, Chris, so the last question we got after there when we showed this for the first time on SolarWinds Lab was, what do you do when you drag an element onto a map mm -hmm. expecting it's going to magically get wired up and nothing happens? What causes that? Yeah, OK. So it should get man magically wired up, right? There's a whole bunch of places we detect um, relationships from, topology, all the stuff in app stack. Uh, a whole bunch of different places, but there are times where we don't. So uh, a good example of that is a VPN connection where you're not monitoring the other side of the VPN. Um, so mm -hmm. the way that you solve that is through dependencies. You can manage dependencies through settings and then all settings. In the top right here, you have manage dependencies. Mm -hmm. So there's two types of depend dependencies, uh, manually generated and automatic. In this case, we're saying automatic is not going to do it for us. Let's create a manual dependency. And so, most of the time, it's going to automatically create them. This tends to be an exception rather than the rule. Yeah, yeah. So in this case, uh, we were working with that lab switch to before. So let me make that the parent. I've selected that. And I click Next here. It's saying, now I need to choose the children. Let's say the this brocade is actually connected directly or is somehow dependent on that. Um, so I've selected that here. And then I am going to Next. Now, uh, I can name that whatever I want. I'm just going to leave it as Lab Transit Switch to Dependencies. Now, that dependency is in the can, right? So let's jump over to one of those nodes. Lab Transit Switch 2. And that writes directly into the relationship database, right? So perf stack and all of these different features that depend on those relationships and allow you to walk through them are now informed of that dependency. So on this map subview, you'll see here it just pops up with that uh, node right here. I think you made an interesting point there, is that this is the, the same data that is connecting all the elements inside of the Orion platform. And the more modules you are using, the more data you're going to have. But by creating that dependency, that's going to be useful for more than just maps, right? You're going to be able to do uh, alert. Uh, Alerts, yeah, that'd be the big one. Alert suppression. Um, it's going to show up in uh, app stack, perf stack. And um, anywhere else, the dynamic maps, pretty much anywhere else. So yep. fixing that dependency right here, anytime you're interacting with either one of those two endpoints, it's going to automatically be available. Yeah, it's a great example of why you want a platform, something that multiple different technologies can use to create a consistent behavior in your IT environment. That's awesome. So that's about it, right? We covered everyone's questions. What did we see? We saw creating maps from scratch. We saw adding maps to views and a refresher on knock views. We saw um, dependencies. Which we haven't covered before. Yeah, so the feedback is great on this. Everyone should be watching the What We're Working On post on Thwack to see what's coming next. Cool. Well, thanks for taking the time to go over it. Sure, no problem. 
Do you die a lot on this? No, no. Lunch? Yeah.